Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Okay. My name is Christopher Qualick, and I am a vascular and endovascular surgeon at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. So I take care of patients there. I'm also the director of the clinical training program for training sort of the next generation of vascular and endovascular specialists uh, within the uh, Mass General Hospital uh, for the Department of Surgery. So my practice involves treating all types of patients with problems related to circulation. And that could uh, involve everything from uh, aneurysms in the chest or the abdomen to blockages in arteries, essentially anywhere in the body, um, excluding uh, problems inside the brain and problems inside the heart. And we also, more recently, have become very involved, not only with treating problems with blockages from uh, the arteries, which carry the blood away from the heart, but also some of the major blood vessels that carry the blood back from the legs, the extremities, back to the heart and the chest. So the topic of the recent talk was related to a new technique, a new option for managing patients with very large blood clots that are either in the major vein coming from the legs or in the abdomen going up to the heart and the lungs. So can you tell us a little bit more about this talk? Okay. So um, one of the areas, at least in the U.S., that's been very much underappreciated is the problem related to blood clots occurring often in patients who have either been traveling long distance or perhaps had recent surgery or recent trauma. And the risk related to this is one, when these clots occur, they cause an obstruction or a blockage. Think of it like a dam or a stream where the blood vessel blocks up, the pressure behind it builds. And so if, for example, there's a problem with a blockage in the vein in the leg, there's a decrease in the amount of blood that returns back to the heart and the lungs, but just as importantly, that blockage causes a lot of swelling, edema, changes in the leg. Now that could be dangerous in several ways. One, if acutely a piece of that clot were to travel or to break off, that could actually go directly to the heart and into the lungs, to the pulmonary arteries, and that often could be either severely debilitating or even life-threatening. And so that was really the topic of this talk. However, in addition, if the clot stays in the leg or stays in the veins in the abdomen or the pelvis, it can also, over the course of weeks, months, even years, cause secondary congestion, problems with pain, problems with swelling, and more importantly, long-term disability in terms of even things like ulcers and sores and non-healing wounds down in the lower extremity. It's a little bit different than what we often think of when we think of circulation problems, at least in, in my current practice, many of our patients have problems with the blood getting into the leg and the, when the arteries. But this is a problem actually with the blood flowing back out of the legs. So the topic of this specific talk was about two years ago, we became aware of a new device, a new uh, technique to be able to go in and actually remove very large segments of clot with a new uh, mechanical thrombectomy tool. I think the easiest way to think of it is it's almost like a suction tubing or a vacuum hose. It's hooked up to a partial uh, bypass pump where we introduce this into the abdomen or the pelvis of the leg and we're actually able to remove very large uh, areas of clot. Prior to this, the ways that we would use it would be either going in with a catheter and trying to break it up or using what's referred to as clot busting medicine, often TPA. And that can work, but it obviously takes a little bit longer in terms of the time. And the concern is some of these clots are very, very large, and uh, when you're breaking it up, there's also the concern, could that travel elsewhere, for example, up to the heart and the lungs? So this is a new technology that's become available Initially, it was designed uh, by actually a heart surgeon over at the Brigham and Women's Hospital to retrieve clots out of the pulmonary artery, which is the major artery uh, going to the lungs. But I was actually attending a conference, a, sort of a heart and vascular conference, saw this, and after talking with the, uh, the inventors, 
it became clear that I think there were other applications, not just for the heart, but also for use in the peripheral veins and in the uh, inferior vena cava, which is the main vein which brings blood back from the legs, back to the heart and to the chest. How do you think treatments are going to continue to change in the next five to ten years? Well, I think hopefully one of the biggest things that we can do is increase patient awareness. And not just patient, but also physician awareness. Because I think many times patients come in with these large clots in the abdomen or the pelvis, or they've even had clots that have traveled to the heart and the lungs, and that can be undiagnosed or unrecognized or potentially even undertreated. I think for many years the standard way of treating this is with heparin is a blood thinner, which is a good first start, but in many patients, particularly ones who are relatively healthy otherwise, I mean, this affects a broad spectrum of ages and types of patients, but for patients who are able to undergo what certainly is a more uh, aggressive procedure or a more invasive procedure, the potential benefit is five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road for them to have a much better quality of life and functional status, whether it be less swelling and pain and discomfort from the legs, or whether it would be better heart and lung function and capacity by aggressively trying to remove clots that actually are sitting in the uh, heart or the arteries going out to the lungs. What do you think it's most important for patients to know about this? I think it's important for patients and their families to understand that when they have um, something that's unexplained, in other words, a, a sudden change in the status of perhaps uh, the size of one leg, if they've been on a recent trip perhaps, or a recent hospitalization, that they should seek at least further attention to evaluate whether or not there's something going on in terms of an acute blood clot. And again, it doesn't just have to be in the acutely hospitalized patient. I've had patients who have undergone my, what would be relatively minor surgery, ambulatory knee surgery recently, or someone off a long plane flight from overseas, or someone who's taken a, a recent car ride. All of them uh, have had problems with a fairly on sudden onset of pain, swelling, discomfort, and a clot, and eventually will make it to either the physician's office or an emergency room and get seen. And then the other thing is to ask questions. It's always good to ask questions about what are my options for treatment. Um, I understand I can be treated with blood thinners, but are there other options, clot busting medications or catheters that might be able to remove the clot more quickly or more rapidly? And then like with any intervention, I think it's always very important to understand and to ask about the potential risks and the benefits because Obviously, as we think about a more invasive procedure or a more aggressive procedure, it has certainly potential benefits in terms of, say, removing clot or opening up circulation or restoring flow through a certain area, but there's also inherent with that some amount of increased risk if you're performing a more invasive or aggressive procedure. Do you have any specific patient stories that you'd like to share? Well, I think probably the, the best, most recent story is a patient of mine who otherwise was very, very active, healthy, um, walking you know, on a regular basis, who had undergone what would have been considered a relatively minor, relatively minor uh, scope procedure for the knee. And after that, uh, had developed some swelling on one side ended up going on some mild blood thinners and found, in fact, that she had developed a major clot uh, going up the leg. Uh, ended up coming back in, getting admitted to the hospital, and in fact, the clot had progressed to the point where it had not only affected the leg, but swelling all the way up to the hip and the pelvis, so much so that I was very concerned that it might be uh, something that could potentially at the very least risk long-term ulcers and inflammation and sore and, and could be very dangerous certainly in terms of risk of traveling uh, elsewhere. So we actually went in and put in a temporary umbrella above the clot so that it would not travel or if it did it would be captured and would not go to the heart and the lung and then proceeded to go ahead and try to open that up or break that up and initially we tried with smaller catheters and because there was so much stenosis there, could not successfully do that. And so with this newer vortex procedure, with this large 
vortex yes. suction throm or aspiration thrombectomy okay. catheter, we actually went in through a small incision in the groin, opened up and removed the clot there, and then used this catheter system to clean out the clot in the leg. At the same time, we used a new ultrasound device to look inside the blood vessel, found in fact that the vein from her left leg was being compressed by her own artery, which is carries its uh, carries a name in terms of a syndrome may syndrome. But basically, uh, we were able to identify that, treat that as well with a stent, and reestablish flow through there. So it wasn't just one thing; it wasn't just the surgery. But she had recent surgery, so a period of relative immobilization. She had an anatomic compression that she had for her entire life, but it was the combination of that and perhaps something about her blood at the time of surgery uh, that made it a little bit thicker that made her prone to having the clot. The good thing is I just saw her back in the office very recently. Basically the leg has gotten back to normal, the swelling's gone. More importantly, when we do the ultrasound to look at the veins in the leg, they're functioning and working normally. The concern with many of these patients is once they have a blood clot in that vein and it stays, even if it partially resorbs slowly over time with heptin or blood thinner, that can damage the inside of the vein and damage the valves. There's actually a series of one-way valves in the vein so that as you walk or move around, the blood travels from the foot to the calf to the thigh, up into the abdomen and back to the heart. And those valves are what prevent the blood from backing up when you're standing or walking. It's sort of one-way valve back to the heart. When those valves are damaged, then the blood can back up and become more congested down in the leg. And so critically important to be able to open those veins back up, restore flow, allow that area to heal, and recover that valve function. And so from her standpoint, the hope will be that obviously 10 years, 15 years from now, she's active, ambulating, has good function in the veins, and she's back to living a normal, active, healthy life. And then we go in, and this is another very important point, as we see more patients with these clots in the legs and in the pelvis, we will often put this temporary umbrella or basket or IVC filter in above the clot to try to prevent it from breaking off and traveling to the heart. Once they've had that done, once the clot's been removed, and they're a little bit further out from the procedure, we'll actually be very aggressive about following those patients up and going at back and taking that umbrella or that basket out because there has been a great deal of concern recently that if you leave the filters in for longer periods of time, there can be complications and problems with the, the filter itself. And so there's been a very big emphasis, both regionally and nationally, to aggressively follow these patients up to make sure that we're going back and removing filters in everybody except for the patients who absolutely need to have something in long term. Is there any other advice that you have for patients? I've been very impressed with the number of patients who come in routinely having researched and thought about problems and come in with very good questions. I realize it can be challenging sometimes because with the internet there's so much information out there it's often hard to differentiate but I think it's very good and reasonable for patients to be informed and then to come in and have a chance to interact one-on-one -on -one with their physician, whether it be their primary care physician or if it's a, an area that a specialist should or can help in terms of being involved. I think that's very helpful as well.